Good Sunday morning from the Florence International Church in Florence, Italy. We greet you today in the wonderful name of Jesus, and it is my privilege and pleasure as the pastor of the Florence International Church to bring to you today the message from the Word of God. We are so grateful in this moment of time that we can continue to reach out in this way and bring God's Word, light, and truth to each and every one who listens. Today, before we begin the message, we will once again look to a time of reflection and worship, and after that time, we will gather together and look into the Word of God for a message entitled, Surviving Giant Country, and it will be based on our series, once again, that we are doing on David and his life and what it has to say for each and every one of us today. So, set back right now, let's reflect and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts and lives, and then we'll be right back in just a few moments for the word and the message today. Oh, what a beautiful 
From 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verses 32 through 40, we find the following passage of scripture that reads, David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, you, your servant, has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off the sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear <clears throat> will rescue me from the hand of the Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his, him his sword over the tunic and tried walking around him because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. Part of God's training plan for David involved God placing the young man in some very difficult situations. In those difficult times, David learned to trust the Lord and walk in the power of God, not the power of the flesh. David learned the lessons necessary to survive life, and not just to survive, but to thrive in, a, in life. We see David in one of the most desperate times of his life in these verses that we find here today. Here David trusts God for some big things, and in return he sees God do the miraculous. Now I know we have all heard these verses preached and in fact probably re-preached countless numbers of times. And it is doubtful that I will have anything new to add to what you already know today. But I feel that there are some helpful instructions contained here that if followed can help us to lead a more victorious life. I also know that I am preaching to people who are battling giants of their own today. Some of you are facing some pretty significant giants in your life in this moment. And I believe these verses can help you. As we watch David walk into the valley of Elah, and face a nine foot, nine inch giant, we can see some much needed instructions about how we can survive when we are in our own giant country. So I want to help you and share these instructions with you as I preach on the subject, surviving giant country. The first point that I will make today 
comes from verses 17 through 24, and it is entitled, Survival is a Matter of Timing. This day for David began like, frankly, any other day. He plans to tend his sheep and to do the things he has done day after day for many, many years. But this day will be different. Jesse sends David to check on David's three elder brothers who are fighting in Saul's army. They have been gone for at least 40 days, as told to us in 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 16. And Jesse is worried about his sons. You see, in those days, countries did not have standing armies. Ordinarily, and citizens of all kinds would rally around the king when he called for volunteers to fight. So David goes to his brothers as he was commanded. And when he arrives, he finds the armies of Israel cowering in fear because of the taunts of the giant Goliath. Even King Saul appears to be too afraid to face the giant in battle. But while the armies of Saul hide in their tents, David hears the giant as he blasphemes the name of God and shames the people of God. David's day had started like countless others. But before the sun went down, David found himself face to face with a mighty big giant. Isn't that just how the giants of life come to you and I today? They rarely give notice that they are coming. You get up one morning expecting that day to be like any other day and there it stands. A giant has entered into your life. When they come, they always catch us off guard and they always frighten us. We look up at them and most of the time we have no idea what to do. If we are going to survive in giant country, we need to understand that giants don't just show up. Their appearance is always well timed. Now from our perspective today, they just appear, but from God's perspective, they are all part of his perfect plan for each of us. If we could ever grasp the truth that nothing comes our way apart from the will of God, it would change our attitude toward the giants that we face in our lives. Passages like Romans 8, 28, Psalm 37, 23, Job 23, 10, Jeremiah 29, 11, etc. would become real to us if they would bring great comfort to, their, to our hearts and we would take them in that perspective. Most of the time, we are just like Israel. They had wandered through the wilderness for two years after they left Egypt. They had arrived at the banks of the Jordan River. All they had to do was cross the river and take the promised land a blessing that God had already promised to them. Instead of going in and taking the land, they first sent 12 spies into the land. The spies looked over the land and came back with their report, and 10 of the spies were convinced of Israel's defeat because of the presence of giants they found in the Promised Land. The spies' own words tell the story best for us 
in Numbers 13, 23 through 33. The people needed a negative report of 10 men and had to spend 38 more years because of it in the wilderness. Here's the point of that. Did God know about the giants? Could he have removed them before Israel arrived? Did he allow them to be there? The answer to all those questions is yes. He knew they were there all the time. Yes, he could have removed them. Yes, he allowed them to be there. You see, God wanted Israel to face those giants. Forty years later, when they came back to the Jordan River, guess what? The giants were still there, waiting for them. By the way, <clears throat> this same principle is seen over and over in the Bible. Hebrews 3, in the, of the, the three Hebrews in the furnace, we find in Daniel, and also Daniel in the lion's den, and the disciples in the storm in Mark chapter 6, verses, or verse 45. Many accounts we find in the Word of God concerning these things. God knew about all of those events because they were part of His perfect plan. Here is what I am trying to tell you today. What that giant showed up for in your life, it did not get there by accident. That giant is there by the providence of God Himself. <clears throat> it is there because God sent it, allowed it, or however you want to say it, the result is still the same. It is there because God in His precise timing wanted you to face it when you came, when it came to you. When the giants come, we can get depressed. We can get defeated. Or we can realize that they are a tangible symbol of God working out His will in each and every one of our lives. We can be like Saul and Israel and we can hide from the giant or we can be like David and we can face the giant. We can be discouraged or we can do like Job and worship in spite of what the giant is doing in our lives. The choice is yours, friend. Remember that. But if we can ever understand that giants come according to God's timing, it will help us survive when we are in giant country. The second point that I will make today comes from verses 25 through 40. Surviving is a matter of trusting. When David hears the threats and defy the defiance of Goliath, he determines that something must be done about this giant. He makes his intentions known in verse 26, verses 26 through 32. And David sets out to see Goliath defeated. But as soon as David expresses his desire to see the giant defeated, he is met with criticism in verse 28 and doubt in verse 33. Yet, as we watch David move toward the moment when he will face off with the giant, we see a young man who has learned something about faith and trust in the Lord. David has learned about God's purpose. 
Understand that. David had been anointed as king to sit on a throne. David knew that he would not die that day. Secondly, David has learned about God's protection in verses 34 through 37. David knew that everything God had done in the past, he was still able to do in this particular moment. David has learned also about God's power in verses 38 through 40. And David knew that victory did not reside in swords, shields, and spears, and armors, and bows, and all of the tools of, of war, but it instead came through the mighty power of God himself. He would go into battle with the same God and with the same weapons he had used before. In other words, David's trust was not in the army, the armor, or the armament, armaments. David's trust was instead in Almighty God. The same God who had protected him and given his victory after victory on the hills of Judea would grant him the victory in the valley of Elah. For David, there was only one giant there that day, and his name was really not Goliath. The only giant David had in his life to face was the Lord God Almighty himself. What a lesson for us today, friends, who also face giants from time to time in our life of all manners, kinds, and means. If we could ever learn the same lesson that David learned about fighting giants, we could make short work of them in their effect in our own lives. Here's what you need to know today. First of all, God did not save you for some giant to destroy. God saved you to take your home in heaven one day with him. That giant cannot undo the eternal work of God who has already done something powerful in your soul. That giant is there as part of God's eternal plan for your life. The giant is there to grow you, as talked about in Numbers chapter 14. There's nothing quite like cutting your teeth on a few giants to help your faith grow stronger each and every day. You can trust God, and you can trust God's purposes in your life. Secondly, God will not change courses in the middle of the stream. He will always be that which he has ever been. Always. One of the greatest attributes of our Lord is his immutability. That simply means he's unchangeable in every way. God is a God who cannot change. Malachi 3.6 and Hebrews 13.8 speak of that. The same God who did all those marvelous miracles we read about in the Bible is still the same God today. You've heard about the Red Sea, the manna, water from the rock, the meal barrel and the cruise of oil, the loaves and the fishes and the raising of Lazarus, etc. We've all heard and read those stories. Well, the same God who did all those things and countless others is still the same God 
that we look to today. His name says it all in Exodus 3, verse 14. He is the self-existent, changeless God. You can trust God for his protection. You know, we seem to have no trouble remembering our past defeats, and we all have them. But we have real problems remembering the victories that the Lord has given to us time and time again. Think about it. We can remember every valley, but we can't seem to remember even one mountaintop oftentimes. God will never fail those who place their trust in Him. Those who trust men's methods and materials can and will fail, but those who place their unwavering trust in God and His power will never fail. You see, our God is not weak. He's not anemic. But instead, He is powerful. He is a powerful God of glory, a God who is ever moving in mighty ways to make His power known. Those who trust Him as they face the giants of their lives can see that power work in their lives by faith. God is powerful. Those who walk with their faith in Him can experience that power time and time and time again. God is able. Where you are right now in this moment and where your trust is as you face life, those are questions that you must face. Is your trust in man? Is your trust in the economy? Is your trust in self? Let me remind you, if it's in any of those things, it will fail. As we face our giants, let us be certain that our faith and our dependence is in the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He and he alone will never, ever fail you. Our survival depends on our being able to trust Him. The third point that I will make today comes from verses 41 through 54, and it is that survival is a matter of taking. There comes a time when talk must stop and action must begin. The time had come for David to take that which he had already been given by the Lord. He walked down into the valley. He faced that giant. He declared his faith in God and he slung that stone and he killed Goliath. What a moment it must have been in young David's life to see God do that which no one but David believed was possible to do. Friends, there's a time when the talking needs to stop and the taking needs to begin. As we face our own giants day by day, isn't it about time that we started taking by faith some of the things we have only talked about up until this moment? For instance, we talk about God providing for us, but we still worry about our finances and our provision. We talk about God's grace in every situation in life, but we still act like we aren't going to make it. We talk about God being in control of our lives, but we live like our lives are out of control. Isn't it time we stop talking about all we could have in Jesus and we just started taking it? 
David defeated Goliath because he was willing to take what God had given him in faith. And the same thing will work in your life and mine today in this moment. As we face our giants, we have already been promised victory from the Lord. So let's determine to go out and take what has been promised and given to us. How? By doing what David did. First, place your trust in the Lord. He is your source. Believe that he can do everything that he has ever done before and will do it again in your life. Then, walk into your valley, square off with your giant, and keep slinging until that giant falls. I am convinced that is the reason David took five stones to kill that one giant. He knew he might miss on the first shot, and he aimed to keep slinging stones until the victory was won. Was won. Friend, whether you believe me or not, here, in, here is the truth of the matter. You, every one of you listening to this broadcast today, you are meant to be a giant killer. Not because you possess any power of your own, but because you serve a God who possesses all power. Not because your aim is good, but because you serve a God who never, ever misses. Not because you deserve anything at all from God, but because He has promised to give you His victory through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So get out there and take what is yours by faith. Your survival today depends upon it. In conclusion, let me say to you, do you have a giant that you would like to see defeated in your life today? In all honesty, I think if we were, were to face reality, we would all have to say yes to that question. Let me tell you, they don't always fall easily. Goliath went down on the first swing. Yours and mine might take more than that first swing. But if your giant ever falls, it will be through the work of Almighty God in your life and on your behalf, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts as read in Zechariah 4, 6. It is interesting, I believe, today to watch the characters involved in this particular account that we have been talking about. Saul nurses his fears. Eliab feeds his jealousy. Goliath polishes his pride. And David flexes his faith in God. The rest watch as David claims the true victory. It could have been Saul, it could have been Eliab, it could have been any of the thousands there in Israel, but it was left to a shepherd boy who claimed the victory and claimed the power of God and was willing to teach those around him about God's victory in faith. So you can hide in your tent. You can try your best to avoid the giant in your life. Some will do so and think, well, maybe he'll just go away. Let me tell you something. He won't. Look at verses 3 and 25. By the time the 40, 
of the fortieth day had arrived, Goliath had already crossed the valley and was starting up the mountain toward the camp of Israel. Your giant won't just go away. He will instead get closer and closer, and eventually he will defeat you if you do nothing about it. Your giant will not be content to do nothing. He will take over your life if you allow him to do so. Or you can get up and you can go out to meet that giant in with your faith intact and with God going before you to do battle with you and for you. That is the recipe that we have for victory today in the war against the giants of our lives. If you need to do a little giant killing today, I want you to know there's a place for you to go and make an altar unto the Lord and to load your sling and take your swing at the giant. That place is waiting for you right now. All you have to do is go to the Lord and trust Him in prayer. Would you pray with me today? Father, we come in the precious name of Jesus today before the throne, recognizing that for each of us, we have and will face giants in our life, and recognizing that we in ourself do not hold or possess the weapons and the tools to defeat that giant. But look, you, Lord, have everything needed. And all you want us to do is to exercise our faith in you, follow your guidance, trust you, and see the victory won for your glory. Lord, for those today in this message that are facing many trials, many giants, and maybe are discouraged and feel defeated, Lord, would you sh just right now speak to their heart and encourage them to reach out in faith to you. You haven't gone anywhere, and you're certainly not defeated, nor will you be, and all they need do is trust you. If there are those today who have not received you as Lord and Savior, Lord, you're waiting on them too. The biggest giant they have in their life right now is unforgiven sin. And if they will turn to you and ask your forgiveness and repent and choose to serve you, Lord, you will become their giant killer. We just must trust you. There may be others who have struggled and accepted you in the past and now they have turned another way and they're struggling once again. Lord, you're faithful to forgive if they will only come to you and seek your face and once again accept your forgiveness and love and move forward for your glory. Father, we live in a time where there are countless giants in our path. But there's not one giant that is greater than your love and your power to defeat them. Lord, I just pray that you will touch each one right now and you will spread your love upon them and give them strength and encouragement and move them forward, Lord, to be a giant killer in this moment of time. Thank you, Jesus, for being there for us and doing what you and you alone can and will always do. In your name we ask it. Amen. I want to thank you today for joining us for this message, and I hope it has been a source of encouragement to you because I know many today 
are struggling with their own particular giants. But remember, he is able. Join us this coming Wednesday for our devotional thought for the week. It is aired on Facebook on Wednesday morning at the Florence International Church, and we trust it will be a midweek pickup that will encourage you and strengthen you as you walk in the Lord's way in your life. Then next Sunday morning, once again, at this same time, uh, we will join together on www florenceinternationalchurch.com the link will be posted on both Facebook and up on uh, YouTube and uh, we want to encourage you to join with us as we look to a very special Easter message for that Sunday morning we pray the Lord's blessings upon you today our heart and our love for you is strong if you have prayer needs please send them to us at our email address, which is florenceinternationalchurch at gmail.com. We will respond, and you can be sure that we will pray for you. God bless you today. May this day be filled with the love of Jesus, and may you be encouraged in all that you say and do for his glory. Thank you for joining us today.